So, so here today we have the Poco X4 GT. This is a very interesting device because it has a Snapdragon 8100. It runs a, um, it runs, uh, no, it runs a MediaTek 8100. It has 144 hertz display. It has a bunch of really cool, fun stuff about this phone. Um, it's the X4 GT. It doesn't have gaming triggers, but it has a fun, uh, fun advancements. It has 8128 or 8256 LPDDR5 with UFS 3.1 storage, 6.6 inch LCD display um, at 1080p full HD at 20.5 by 9, 144 hertz, 44 hertz refresh rate, seven stage dynamic switch, um, and it comes with a headphone jack, I believe, otherwise, but you get a case in the box too. So let's just put that off to the side. And then you have the phone itself, and it has 67 watt to charging, comes in the box. And then you have your phone itself. Oh my, this is like a, so I'm here with this phone now. And let's peel everything off. But just the camera alone, I'm actually liking this. Though it doesn't have OIS, but the look alone really just sold me on this camera. You get the in fingerprint reader thingy, um, 64 megapixel camera, and you get then a, a 8 megapixel ultra wide and then 2 megapixel macro and then a 16 megapixel front camera. Uh, you get a cooling system, 2.0, a 5080 mAh battery, again, 67 watt turbocharging, 200 grams, uh, face unlock, has 5G, uh, Wi Fi uh, 6, NFC 6, Bluetooth 5.3, USB C 2.0. Um, and it claims to have a bunch of stuff. It claims to have Dolby Atmos stereo speakers, film in 4K, which is very nice. It's up to 270 hertz touch sampling, great. All the nice stuff about it. So this is very, um, very nicely put so far. The bezels aren't actually as big as people claim them out to be. And people have said that this phone looks perfectly nice. Um, so you have your SIM slot, you have a uh, headphone jack. Um, I will test one thing though. But you have your Poco 5G. Uh, you have some nice little touches here. It has an IR blaster. Um, I'm just gonna click don't copy for now. Um, but it looks super nice so far. Like I'm liking this, it feels light-ish. It uh, doesn't have a curved display or all this other stuff. So, I'm gonna get this phone set up and then we'll get back once it has been fully set up. Now that you've seen the unboxing for the Poco X4 GT, I wanna run through a bit of its specifications. So, it has a uh, MediaTek Dimensity 8100. It has a 144 hertz screen with a touch sampling rate of up to 270 hertz. Now it has a seven stage dynamic switching, meaning you can go 30, 60, 30, 50, 60, 90, um, 120, and uh, to, uh, 144. And it can, if you set it to the right mode, it can automatically switch between that. Has a 6.6 .6 inch IPS LCD display up to 1080p. Has Dolby Vision and HDR. The two the two models are 8128 or 8256 and it respectively goes from 350 to 400 US dollars. Now it has even more features. It has a 5080 mAh battery with 67 watt turbocharging with 67 watt in the box. And through my testing I'm able to get about eight hours of screen on time, maybe eight, eight and a half. So it's a very, very good battery in this phone. You get also liquid cool technology 2.0, side fingerprint and face unlock if you care. It's an 8.87 millimeter thick with 200 grams, which doesn't really feel hot. It has 5G, supports NSA and SA. It has USB-C, Bluetooth 5.3, Wi-Fi 6 and NFC. 
Now, the blue the USB C is USB 2.0 speeds, so that kind of sucks. Has dual speakers with the top speaker being mediocre, it's more of just an amplified earpiece than an actual speaker. It has Dolby Atmos, eh, IR blaster, and then the X axis linear motor. And then for the camera, it has 64 megapixel main camera. It has a 8 megapixel ultra wide at 120 point of view. And then it has a 2 megapixel macro camera with a front camera of 30 or 16 megapixels. Now, I've been fooling around with this for the past couple of days and I'm actually loving this thing. So if I pull out this, I want to show you the camera real fast because that is something that I actually like to start off, I want to start off this video with because media, it works fine. The phone works like a phone. I'm not sure what you're expecting me to say. It's fast, it's fluid. So the camera is one of those things that I want to test because cameras can be complete pieces of crap. And with MediaTek, they're known to be even more pieces of crap. And that's not a that's not me bashing MediaTek or anything like that. That's just me and having used MediaTek for the past couple of years and having used their phones. MediaTek's processing used to be bad, but it actually got really good. So if we take a look here, you'll notice that I have a picture of somebody here and you can tell how clear it actually looks like I actually um, I'm actually in love with this photo style so if I zoom all the way in you can tell that the photo looks very bokeh like it looks very good and it just works and it, I think it just, I think it just looks nice. This is just at the regular, um, regular portrait mode out there. And then we have our a beach shot from a specific spot. And I think the colors look clear with being able to zoom in and you can see a ship in the background. You can see perfectly fine these wave breakers and then the area where people are setting up tents and you can see rocks and green foliage and stuff and nothing is blown out of the necessarily ordinary. And then this is another shot I always like to take with my phones because as you can tell, as you can tell, lots of times the phone takes this area and makes it way too bright. Let's turn it down. And as you can tell, it didn't make it too bright at all. And then last year I had a problem with the X3 GT where this was a little bit too dark but in this photo, it actually tunes it to be perfectly good and acceptable here. And it actually didn't make any of these apartments around here too bright at all. Like it was very, a very well balanced photo. And if you notice the stairs, even in the shadowy areas, you can notice whatever your disgusting detail shows up in the stairs. So the camera itself is actually a good camera. And I love it. There's no always on display, but that's because IPS LCD, not OLED. And you get your fingerprint, you attach it, and it turns on. Basically right away. And it just works. Now you have all these app openings, speeds. So if I open up, if I click here and then I click YouTube, you can see basically just needs time to, uh, to load. And then I can scroll through it pretty, pretty easily and fast, as you can tell. So and let's just choose a 4K HDR video. Now the one I like the most is this LG 2020 OLED Black. Now, as you can tell, um, I hate YouTube. There we go. Auto, advanced, 2160p HDR. Now, this may not translate really well for you guys, but for me, the colors um, look cl clear, very, very bright, up to 650 nits of uh, peak and 500 at the sustained brightness if that makes any sense to people it just means that it won't get that bright outdoors it was fine but i thought it could be brighter i know my f4 which i have sitting here uh is about 1300 nits peak and about 
800 to 900 sustained, so it gets a lot brighter. But at least with this uh, Dolby or um, HDR, I think it looks perfectly fine. It's clear, the colors are vibrant, it looks HDR. The blacks, you can tell that they're gray a bit, but it looks very good. Like, I, depending on the spot, am hard pressed at telling what goes where. You can see a bit of a bleed because of, again, IPS, it looks a bit gray. But, I would, I would love to consume content on this thing. So let's take some music and we'll play it through these speakers. Now, it's quite clear, the only problem I have um, is that if I cover the bottom speaker and I play, well, here's what it sounds first with it fully. Now, let's cover this bottom speaker here. The top speaker is on that side, so I'm just holding my finger on the corner. I'll cover the bottom speaker. Let's zoom out for this so you can see perfectly fine. And that's basically at, like, full volume for it. That's not even low volume, that's nothing. That's full volume, and it still sounds very weak on this top speaker, that it's one of these things that I'm not a fan of the speaker on this device at all. Like, I actually, um, for media, for, I don't think that it's the best because of the top speaker being just an amplified earpiece, the way that they have it. I mean, dual speaker, yes, it's fine, but... I don't know, my, what, I have had other phones in this price range, like the uh, Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G, which if we can actually check the price, um, you can tell what it is, and you'll be able to see that for the 120 watt charging, uh, it is about, about 350 in, in the long run. It's going to be about 350 for the phone. So, for what it is, you're also getting MediaTek, but you're getting 120 watt charging, and you're getting dual speakers that work a lot better than this. But, up to you. Now, what the other did, the other thing is, this whole phone just performs well. So, if I swipe between the apps, it works. And if I click on the settings, you can tell I'm running the latest 3.0.3 uh, and my specs are 8 and 128. We can just scroll through. We have our display which I'm forcing at 144 but the default is just dynamically refresh which if we go into device info as you can tell it's 30, 48, 50, 90, 120, uh, 144 and 60 hertz. So it'll automatically switch between any of these refresh rates if you set it to just default. So default, let's say I'm in here. You can probably tell it looks like it's in, at least to me. So you see it shows 120. Now, I'm, I'm over here at 120 is an option, and I've just set dynamic over here. I'm in default, which is dynamic. Now, if I go on to, let's say, Chrome, it should it should switch, which it doesn't. And then when I go to YouTube, it switches to 60 because it doesn't need anything more. It really works. It's I believe this 144 hertz display looks great. Like, people are like, oh no, IPS, oh no, um, oh no, it's not uh, AMOLED, like, okay. Have you used an IPS by itself, not next to an AMOLED? 
so you're not just like, oh, I have an AMOLED, I'm just going to show, oh, the colors look so much brighter on here. Like, bro, AMOLED doesn't need to be AMOLED to look nice. This looks beautiful. It looks bright. It looks vibrant. Outdoors, I wish it could be a bit brighter, but it is what it is, and it works really well. And it doesn't hack in, it's not going to have burn in. So, all in all, this phone is actually great. It has a headphone jack, IR blaster, dual speakers, and the like, and at about $350. Uh, dollars. It's not the worst deal in the world. Now, if you want custom ROMs, I recommend going with the F4 because you're going to definitely get custom ROMs. But to get it all started, at least this is a great device. If you have $350 to spend and you're looking around, this potentially will get ROMs. I'm not saying it will, so don't hold me on that if you're a fan of ROMs. But at least it works. It looks beautiful, it works well, and I just recommend it. I think you should buy this device. Now, it isn't just, uh, just oh, it's the best device in the world. No, there are definitely other devices out there, so do your research in the other devices in this price range. But to start it out, at least, I think this is a good budget device. It didn't have any slowdowns. All the apps opened up. It didn't feel like it was a slow meat processor. It felt really fast. Gaming on here, apps opened really fast. And it had a really fast uh, UFS 2.1 storage and mid -D LP DDR5 RAM. Like, it was actually great. Battery life is excellent and charging takes no more than 30 minutes for me. Just all in all around a great device. Cameras, great, but if you want OIS, get the, the F4 for sure because of OIS. But otherwise, great device. Definitely worth picking up. And if you did like this video, please rate, comment, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.